Hi, this is Matt Carty. This is the European Parliament in Strasbourg. This isn't the RT News. So we've made it to our fourth Facebook Live event. Um, and don't forget, everybody who shares is going to be in the draw to win a Towards the United Ireland mug, much sought after. Now, I have to make a confession. I forgot to actually um, arrange to send the mug to the person who won um, last week. But we're going to get round to that. So I promise, I can't even remember who it was who won, but we're going to get round to that. So we'll have a draw for those who shared last week's um, Facebook Live event. We had a brilliant reaction, especially to Paddy Hill of the Birmingham Six. So for those of you who haven't seen this before, it's an informal discussion, bit of um, um, bit of crack in some cases some serious debate around some of the big and um, small topics and as always we want you to participate put your questions or comments in the in uh, in the comment box under the facebook um, live thing i see some comments coming through now we will get to them um, i had a good few queries after the last one people want us to discuss the whole issue around medical cannabis and we're going to try and organize a show on that if we can get some experts either in brussels or strasbourg and people who know what they're ta talking about but this evening this evening we have an outstanding panel. Um, the ever brilliant MEP for Ireland South, Cork woman, proud Gail Gore. Oh, yeah, Leah, don't mess with me, Nirida, as she's known here <laughs> in the European Parliament. Leah, thanks a million for coming along. Good morning, Matt. Um, you're very welcome. We also have the first person to be invited twice on to this, sh this <laughs> show. Um, Gui NGL, um, Policy Advisor on Economic and Monetary Affairs, Sinn Féin um, Political Activist. Um, Emma, Two times can see as she's from now on <laughs> going to be known. And we're really, really happy to I'll welcome yeah, um, Marisa Matthias, um, MEP from the Left Bloco uh, Party in Portugal. Marisa, a lot of you will probably have heard or seen because she stood for the presidential elections, got the highest vote ever recorded by any woman um, candidate, I understand. Probably building a foundation for success to come. <laughs> Future president of Future Portugal. President of Portugal. She would be really good no. for my ratings here on the Facebook Live no. if I could say all that about, I had a... All about public services, yes, so I'm sorry, but listen, no uh, Thanks a million for coming <laughs> along. So I have an all female panel tonight and before you your equal rights fanatics start emailing me i am going to try and have an all male panel sometime it's just very hard to get men who are interesting or knowledgeable <laughs> or you know who are prepared to come on the on the show so we're really going to um try and s sort that out so listen Don't worry, you can be the token man I'll be the, i'm used to being the token <laughs> man so this week a number of developments we learned from minister damien english that the media reports of Irish homelessness and housing crisis were damaging Ireland's international reputation. So there you have it. It's not the actual crisis, it's the media reporting of the crisis, according to Damien, of course. Um, in case anybody was in any doubt that Bob Geldof is an attention-seeking hypocrite, he very kindly came to Dublin this week to remove all question about it by returning the Freedom of the City honour that he had previously received because um, Myanmar um, President um, Aung San Suu Kyi, yeah. Suu Kyi. Suu Kyi um, had also received the award. So fair play to Dublin Mayor Michal McDonagh for calling out Geldof's hypocrisy of being a knight commander of the savage British army. He hasn't given his knighthood back as yet. And of course, there is a very um, dangerous um, situation of ethnic cleansing in Myanmar, but it requires an international um, response that goes beyond the ego of Bob Geldof. And Speaking of gobshites, this was also the week when the esteemed Paul Houston, isn't that his name? Yeah. AKA <laughs> Debal Bono, explained that he was extremely distressed after learning that his elaborate network of accountants and lawyers <laughs> who are put in place in order to avoid him having to pay a tax actually went ahead and put in place an elaborate scheme that allowed him to um, avoid paying taxes. So are you confused yet? <laughs> you will be because we're going to talk a little bit about this. So Marisa may have to leave us early to go and speak in plenary. What are you yeah. going speaking on? I'm going to speak on inequalities, which is something we cannot find in European Union. Yeah, it's something real difficult, but it's about uh, job creation in order to fight uh, inequalities. That was that is the report. Okay, so um, you you wrote the report. You're the author. I was I was the author of the opinion from Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee. Okay, and I'm sure it got savaged in amendments as yeah, it usually does. Yeah, we managed to save it by a few votes, okay. but it was it was very difficult task. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm, if for those people who think I'm being ignorant, I'm actually just trying to keep an eye on the comments as they're coming okay. through. So, listen, we're talking about um, tax avoidance, tax evasion. You know, what's the problem? What's the difficulty with these guys? You know, 
managing to get away without paying their taxes. So wouldn't everybody love to be able to find a way of doing that? Uh, the major problem, I think, is about uh, the tax policy, which is really unfair. And it's not by chance, it's not by God, God's will, it's not by a disaster of nature. It's, it's just because it is to be like that, because there are some guys, some multinationals, which really are entitled to not to pay taxes mm -hmm. or to pay the, the So what's the possible. cost of it then? What does it mean for society? It when... means a lot. It means a lot. Because... and. Uh, just recently, with the Paradise Papers, we saw how 120 policymakers, politicians, who in fact are imposing austerity and sacrifices to the people, to the workers who cannot, who have to pay their taxes, or the small and medium enterprises, who have no, which have no choice as well. And they are just saving their money for retirement or whatever, because I think they have so much money. And when you think about it, it's really crazy. Uh, but uh, but we discover these same people, which are just in fact not paying their taxes, are the same ones which are applying austerity measures and sacrifices and imposing them. To, yeah, because it's all because we know in, yeah. in Ireland um, it's IBEC, um, you know, the business organisation, and you have these organisations who claim to be about growth and stability, and but they're always the ones who are telling the government you have to cut back on health yeah. spending, on education spending, yeah. but they're also representing companies yeah, that are course, going of out of their I way think, to avoid paying tax. I think this is one of the major signs how democracy was kidnapped by financial interests and, 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 and for, for the multinationals interests but not for people's interests for because sure. you're a bailout country as well so do you get the same debate you know we can't do that because it would upset the markets we always yeah. get that i don't know but yeah, they always the talk markets? about the markets yeah. it's, it's a very sensitive entity which yeah. we cannot damage we and they're very assume. sensitive you know you yeah, can see that these guys in, that you know have so much money hidden away in all these places that they'd be you know they'd have fucking harder in, necks indeed but but we learn a lot we learn mm. a lot about these schemes and of course what is their stake is not so only about being unfair, it's also because the, then the, the public accounts are completely destroyed if these people don't pay taxes where they make their profits and mm -hmm. things like that. So, but I learned a lot over the last years. In, in, indeed, I, I've learned that uh, uh, in some cases, it's just needed to land the, your private jet. You don't need to, to, to get out. You just need to land a little bit for a few mm. minutes, your private jet in Man Island, and then you have a you lot have, of yeah. exemptions in terms of taxes. So you, you don't even need to stay there. So, so it's really an, a, a lack of political will. And unfortunately, the majorities that we have we have here at European Parliament and at European institutions and also in our countries in the governments don't want to tackle it, don't want to rescue democracy and to put it in the safe place which is in the people's hands. Yeah, I want to come back um, to you on terms of the European response later, but Emma, um, how did these guys do it? Like, what's the process not well, that we're not, not we're doing a DIY <laughs> well, program here right. or, but, but yeah how, so how does Bono and the, how do they go about actually not having to pay taxes like the rest of us well the interesting thing about the Paradise Papers is that um, much more so than the Panama Papers there are actually a lot more Irish connections and so in Bono's case for example so Bono um, uh, put his money into a firm in Malta which is mm -hmm. a tax haven they then transferred the money to another tax haven, Guernsey, and then they invested in Lithuania, a country that Bono has never actually performed in, you know, as no, it happens. Poor, poor Lithuania. <laughs> yes, poor yes. Lithuania. They've never had the pleasure. Um, so then this money uh, in this Lithuanian company, they engaged in classic tax avoidance techniques. So they said that... Um, they said that they had to. They made loans within, you know, within their corporate mm. structures, and said, "Well, we have to pay all this interest on these loans to ourselves. That means that um, our profits are lower." Then they devalued their property. So this shopping mall that mm. he invested in, they devalued it so that um, they were able to declare a loss. And when so in fact hard. they it's were it's running a shopping center is hard business. <laughs> well, I know lots of people who run shops and find it hard to make profits. So it, it may be that he didn't have any profits. No, they deliberately devalued the property in order to be able to tick on a form that they were making a loss instead mm. of a profit. And the, the thing that gets me about this is that this is the most crude and classic tax avoidance technique that, you know, yeah, it's not even everywhere. very imaginative. It's not imaginative, it's not original, it's the lack of effort. <laughs> but, yeah. but what I'm really 
angry about because we had guys over from you know, school kids, um, secondary school kids, I don't know if you met any of them, Leah, when they were in Brussels, from the One campaign. And there were yeah. these yeah. ideological, you know, bright-eyed kids who wanted to play a part in you know, fighting poverty, you know, and completely sponsored by um, um, by Bono. And I remember I, I said it to them half joking, you know, tell your boss to pay his taxes, you know, and they you know, got a little bit sheep, sheepish. But, you know, it's the, the damage that it is causing legitimate charities and legitimate advocacy groups in terms of to see that one of the, you know, because he's been presented as this champion of That's tax the of hypocrisy. Yes. That's what it is. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's, it's giving one message and doing another. And I mean, seriously, the fact that he's behind that one organization is quite something. Yeah, and we're, we're going to be accused of begrudgery because every time anybody says anything bad about Bono in Ireland, they're called, oh, typical, we're the begrudging Irish. You know, we don't, no, we no, just don't can, like... You can give the example of Prince Charles, to do with, yeah. instance, and the climate yeah. change and a lot of other things. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, all about, it's all about branding and it's about marketing. So instead yeah. of actually yeah. in, uh, match, matching their obligations to society by whether it's a celebrity or a big company, they um, they will say, well, no, we'll we'll you know spend millions of dollars or euros or whatever currency they're using on um, these law firms, which will tell them how to stash all their money in tax havens, and then they'll donate a tiny fraction to a charity and have a big press conference and tell the world how wonderful they are mm -hmm. in order to sell their product. That's all they're doing. How we for time, Marisa? You've, you're okay, but 20 I past? still have like ten, roughly ten minutes. Okay, no, no, there might be a delay. Show. So, Leah. Every time, you know, there's a debate in this place about tax avoidance or tax evasion or whatever, Ireland is mentioned. You know, Sean Kelly told me earlier on that I was the reason why Ireland was suffering this um, embarrassment because I kept raising, we were wondering I raising the, the issue. So <laughs> it's, not, no, it's, actually, it's actually not the government taking, yeah. ap uh, taking the EU to court because they don't want to collect 13 billion. It's actually me getting up and talking I, about I, it. I so. suspect yes, it as much probably. because look, I just want to ask, there's a small drop of water in this cup and uh, I'm not sure did somebody else use it before me. No, and it's no, not a United really Ireland yeah. cup either. But no, it's absolutely the government not taking Look at the other task. side. Oh, I see. <laughs> See, there's always See, two sides to every story. Perception, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I look at it in terms of the stacks, the, the odds being completely stacked against our SMEs because you look at the people at home, whether you're in Kerry or Galway or wherever you are, and you're struggling for, to make a living, you're self-employed, you're taxed to the hilt, you get absolutely no benefit uh, from the state if you go belly up. There's no incentive there, and that you see, then you see the likes of, of the, the Apple tax, for instance, and the 13 billion that we sent back, that we gifted back. So it makes no sense whatsoever, but it is, of course, the government and Sean Kelly was absolutely wrong, of course, <laughs> as he is on almost everything. Ah, no, uh, Leah, so, Leah, yeah. Sean, uh, Sean's a GA man, we can't say anything bad about him. Oh, well, he's <laughs> Kerry, he's a Kerry, but not, not that I have anything against me to Kerry, but just Sean Kelly is a different client. So, um, Mauricio, your party is part of the government in Portugal. If the European Commission told you that there's the guts of 19 billion euro you can have, would you take them to court to try and not collect it? We are not uh, part of the government in the sense that the government is a uh, socialist party government and we uh, are in the majority, parliamentary majority, which supports it. Ah, that's, but, what, uh, that's yeah. been a fall line, but you're part <laughs> yeah. of the government. You know, the government yeah. can't do w no, without but your the support. One of the, of, okay, we have agreements in a very, uh, that we have no time for these deep explanations. Confidence and we supply, are, don't no, tell but me that. We have that, agreements uh, in very specific areas, and one of the areas in order to have an agreement and to support the budget was, of course, to organize it in such a way that it become fairer for people and workers mm -hmm. and uh, to put a little bit more emphasis and to for instance one of the conditions was to ask to the part in the government to remove from its program reducing the taxes to the big companies and increasing to the workers and the small and medium yeah. enterprises yeah, uh... so we didn't manage to do the revolution yet but we managed to uh, because the government's actually more, very popular, more. isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, because in fact it has bring, it brought more social justice and, and mm. uh, responses to concrete people's problems and, and we were talking about after years of austerity and... and so I take so it though, if the European Commission, if Marguerite Festiger rang your party tomorrow and says, here, I'm after realising that a multinational corporation owes you maybe 16, 17 billion euro in taxes, you're going to say, give it to us? 
uh, it should be redistributed for sure. <laughs> yeah, for those in need. For those in need. So, um, like you're, you've been the vice chair of one of the first committees yeah. that was set up, which was the tax aid committee. When that was after the LuxLeaks, yeah. which people forget because when we're having the discussion around Paradise Paper, not so much Paradise, but in Panama, they talked about, oh, this is all happening outside of the EU. You know, the belly of the beast is in the country yeah. of the we, we, current president of the commission. Yeah, yeah. The LuxLeaks and tax aid committee one and two was a special con committee, it was not even an inquiry committee because it was about the president of the European yeah, Commission, yeah. so you, 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 can, you could not do an inquiry with him. And, and in fact everyone was, uh, I think it was one of the major calls for these, we, of different types of treatment of people, because then when it was about panic, Panama Papers, then we had an inquiry committee. Mm. When it is abroad it's okay, but at the end, the consequences are not so different, mm -hmm. I have to say. So we are moving from one committee to another committee, despite the fact it is special or inquiry committee. But uh, we didn't change the law. And we have to listen all these times. Uh, OK, this is according to the law. But we are here but to change the But the Panama change Papers the Committee was a little bit stronger then, because it was an inquiry committee. Uh, yeah. So it, and the Paradise, does, do you think there will be a Paradise Paper Committee? or? I, I don't know. I think that at some point we need a lack of shame committee to, to, to deal with these issues, because we are moving from mm. one committee to the other and to the other. And even that Panama Papers, uh, uh, Panama Committee has a m more power, in fact, I don't see the translation of the recommendations into the concrete uh, policy making and to decision making. So that's that's the major problem. OK, so remember, problem anybody who's watching, them. hit share because we want to get loads of viewers. Sorry, Leah. I'm saying that that's, that's an indication that that's systemic and everything, you know, we talk about policies and all of that, but the implementation is completely where it's lacking because yeah. it's the interpretation followed by the lack of implementation, depending on the government of the day, whether it suits them or not. So you have that constant toing and froing, and at the end of the day, it's the citizen at home that feels the net result of it. Yes. In, in relation to the Paradise Papers, it's actually impossible for the, um, for the Parliament to immediately open a new inquiry committee because they've said um, that, you ca that you need a 12-month period to of pause um, in between one inquiry committee and the next if it's going to look at the same issues. So oh, there, was, there, was that the case with the, look, with the tax aid? Was no, there, they were special committees. It was a special committee ah, and the other right, was an okay. inquiry okay. committee. Okay. But yeah. again, as simple you said, in this uh, that's no, extra, extra but, special. But the, yeah. the, the real but we, issue That's is, what the European Parliament rules say. Yes. So we can change the European Parliament yeah, rules. As, as that, we can yeah, change the, 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 the laws. That's, yes. that's what we are supposed um, to be that, doing now. But, well, I mean, it might be in the treaty, but who knows. But the um, <laughs> the, the issue is that we, we have been calling... Anybody who's read the treaties, text us in now. <laughs> let us know. You can get a free mug just for that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been giving away my mugs willy-nilly. You have to hit share if you want to get a mug. But the, um, the, point, the point is that you're, you're right, like the, we're going to make, next month the Panama Papers Committee is going to make its report, it's going to vote on the report and recommendations and these are going to address issues that are already on the table um, and in, in the process of being legislated for in the European Parliament. So there's a revision of the anti-money laundering directive which will require much stronger rules on beneficial ownership. So that means the real flesh and blood owner of a company needs to be put on a public register. That's mm. something the, mm. um, the Irish government is opposing. They, don't, they say, have what the register, surprise. but don't make it public. Yeah, Just so like with country-by-country yeah. country reporting. Yeah. You can that's, report that's to the tax authorities. It's like saying, yeah, you should, have yeah. To, you should have tax your car, but don't display it. Um, yeah. because, uh, no, and but, we'll, but we'll everyone, try and guess who doesn't have it. Everyone thinks that at this moment you already, we have already adopted the country-by-country country reports. Yeah. But there are so many exceptions. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, useful. To keep the secrecy and all these things, mm. that at the end you can stay exactly as you want. Can any of you explain, mm. just because I think it's really important that people understand this, exactly why public country by country reporting is so important? It's important because it's the only way that you have to have transparency in the, the money which circulates and the capitals which circulates uh, in, amongst the different countries because. Um, there's no other way. So if you send a huge amount of money for some place, you need to register mm -hmm. it and to, you need to make it public. That's the only way then to, to, be accountable. To, yeah. to be accountable and then to follow it in order to see whatever the money moves yeah. to. So the big question, and you might, I don't know what your actual position is because we have different positions obviously within GUI NGL. 
But you know, one of the big debates that I always, always get accused of, and when we were advertising what this show was going to be about, a lot of comments were coming through that we're trying to undermine Ireland's ability to set, set its own tax rates. Do you support national parliaments being able to set their own tax rates, or do you think that should be an EU competency? I think I think that the national parliaments should be able to, mm -hmm. to, to define You can it. stay. You can stay. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. because yeah. let's see, if you look to the... Uh, in fact, the definition of the budget and the definition of tax policies is a core element for any government, any parliament in the world. So why to give it to Brussels? It means that then you can change government, but you cannot change policies. Yeah. That's, it's an erosion that's, of sovereignty. So. Really. Well, you know, yeah. Leah, every time we're in a debate on this, that mm. the, you know, the Fine Gael in particular, but also Fianna Fáil, they're very clever at um, saying that you are giving away, you know, to say tax transparency, mm. tax justice is the same thing as tax sovereignty. So if mm. you give on one, you give on the, give on the other. Mm. You know, how do we, are, are we doing a good job at explaining to people that there's a difference between both things? No, I don't. And I think the general person out there watching this um, probably is very far Although we have a very that. highly educated I'm, I'm sure um, are, viewership I mean, of not the RT news, you know, I think it has to be the, said. Even ourselves, this is something that, it is complicated. And unless you have a very keen interest in following that specific thing, it's very difficult. It can be very technical. And it's difficult for people to relate it to well, the bread and butter There's 19 billion euro just sitting there that we should be collecting. Oh, what would well, you yeah, do with the would, 19 billion would, if you had I would collect. I'm telling you, I would have a hell of a good night first. And then, <laughs> ah, no, Leah, we're and supposed to be the responsible party um, of government. Being the responsible <laughs> part, people that we are, of yeah. course, look, housing and health and all of those issues, that's where it should go. I mean, look at I was. Well, it would solve our health crisis it, it, overnight. It would and, solve and, our housing our crisis homeless, our overnight. Yeah. you know, issue, which is a huge thing. I was in Cork recently at the Simon community where they were talking about 2016 and the figures that they had for that and it was appalling and it was disgusting and to hear you know the yeah. Lord Mayor of Cork talking about it and, and platitudes you know and nothing really practical being done yeah. and then 13 billion so I think most people relate to that. Good stuff. Sorry, you have, have to go to okay know. before you go I want you to pick a number between 1 and 62 because this is a, a, a 13 because really, 13, this is an elaborate approach I've taken <laughs> it's a last minute approach to see who wins the mug. Okay. Number 13. This is transparency. John Darcy I hope you weren't the person who won the mug last week but you are now the proud owner of a Towards the United Ireland, GUI NGL mug. Marisa Matthias, you're a thank legend. You. Thanks towards a million for coming along. We're still here for another ten sure. minutes. Don't thank you. Don't go, any of our Portuguese friends who, who tuned in, don't, don't leave us because it's going to get. It's going to get. So John John Darcy <laughs> clean, um, clean is, is is going to have a mug sent to him if ever I can figure out how we actually contact people over <laughs> try, try and, clean. and say that. So I'm going to go through some of the comments. Unfortunately, Marisa isn't here to answer any of the questions that have been put I'm to so her. Sorry. Lots of the usual Shut stuff, up. and I, I know. We always say we're going to respond to every question and then we don't. Um, but a lot of hellos, a lot of people telling that they're coming in. Um, good question there. Would the United Ireland have a new All-Ireland Bank and banking system and money? Probably not in the short term, Emma. I think we'll be stuck with the euro for a little while, but um, at least we'll have that. Um, what's your position on our 9.4 exemption from all domestic water charges? Are we still holding on to that, Leah? Yeah. We still have it, okay. Damien English would want to ask, okay, I'm not going to um, <laughs> just, I have to be careful about when you mention any other Mercosur deal, what's the story? We're going to have a big um, discussion sometime on trade deals yep. because um, if we can get the right people, that can actually be really interesting. If we get the wrong people, it will put you all to sleep, no doubt about it. Um, looking forward to the Sinn Féin Ardesh. Yes, we are. We'll be, we'll be talking with, talk about that later. Um, I don't think there's any very complicated question. Um, had there's a fellow from Leaf said he canvassed for me in the elections. Fair play to you, Jerry. <laughs> mug going your yeah, way. Yeah, well, I can't know. We've been very careful with the with the mug. So then, um, yeah. So Bob Geldof getting plenty of mentions there, and we'll try and. Bob Geldof is basically the only person I can imagine in the entire world who could manage to turn what's a horrific genocidal, you know, humanitarian catastrophe into an issue all about him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Conor McGuinness, who works in um, Lee and Eureka's <laughs> office, wants to know what do you have to do Hi, to win a mug? Um, yeah. Connor, you're working in the wrong office. I provide all <laughs> no, my staff they're, they're, towards the United Ireland, Ireland mug. I dirty. think Leah gives you an umbrella or something. They're, I do. They, and they, Lynn they, Boylan. Lynn's watching. <laughs> Lynn's actually watching. How are, you, how are you, Lynn? Lynn wants to know what's in the mug because hers was empty when she was on. We got small, um, a, a bit of water. A small drop Leah. of water. It is um, not the Gowering Bond. It is water and probably used at that. Lots I of think Munster people saying hello to you, Leah. Hello, Munster I won't, people. I don't think... Um, 
No, none of them have said that they haven't seen you since the election, but now they have, so uh, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, okay, so that's, that's all right. So um, just going back to the issue of tax sovereignty, um, because yeah, particularly it's, it's Brian very, Hayes, he'll yeah. always throw, you know, you're trying to mm. undermine our, our right to set our own taxes. Yeah. So this, I mean, it's a huge issue for Ireland, obviously, but the reason why it's a huge issue for, well, the Irish state mainly, it's not so much an issue at the moment in the north. Um, but it's because the I Irish government successively over decades have basically uh, marketed the state for a conduit for tax avoidance, particularly for US companies. And so now you have a situation where the economy is completely distorted, um, completely over-reliant on one single source of, of, of uh, funding, and that's corporation tax from, a various, from just a handful of companies. So that's the reason why why it's an issue, um, but the, the the thing is that tax uh, tax avoidance is becoming like the most crucial one of the most crucial political issues um, internationally. It's and actually going to damage our economic prospects by continuing to be seen yes. as being a tax haven Absolutely. because companies are going to stop well, wanting yeah. to be associated by any country that has the a, a whiff of it. But also, though, would you not say that you know? Obviously, Brexit is just throwing a spanner in the works completely when it comes to that, but the Brits are now going to be reducing their corporation taxes in order to compete with us, and so you have that kind of a, a race going on. A race to the bottom, uh, yes. And, and that's going to be hugely um, impactful on our country, I think. But I do think that we have to start looking at a reasonable uh, tax process for our self-employed and our SMEs. I keep on going back to that. They're the backbone of the economy. Uh, they don't get any incentives to, to, be, to remain self-employed. And if, yep. as I said earlier on, if they go belly up, nothing no pension no dole no nothing and why would anybody take the risk of becoming a self-employed person when there's no support like that there so there needs to be a fundamental change uh, in the whole culture when it comes but to I, tax i think that i mean there are two there i completely agree with that and there are two issues so the one is you can't actually because the nature of tax avoidance involves multinational corporations unfairly competing with SMEs but they're doing they're able to do it because they are multinational mm. so all the little tricks that they can do by transferring money between each other that's the re they do it across borders so you can't you can't but tackle the, the, the tax problem that a lot of people yeah alone. and that you need international and everybody accepts that and obviously we've been champions of that here but there is a big fear because every time we talk about tax avoidance in this place people talk about consolidation harmonization of, of taxes <coughs> and I I'm sure lots of people have this fear that if we don't actually um, address the issues at a domestic level then we're actually undermining our own arguments for keeping the powers of national parliaments intact. Absolutely I mean the like when Michael Noonan came out here he was just laughed at in the European mm. Parliament when he when he tried to justify um, the Irish government's decision to reject the Apple money. Mm. Um, he told me that day I should be wearing the green jersey. Yes, exactly. Although anybody watching the, la the match last <laughs> night probably would have said wouldn't have done any worse if I was wearing it. But anyway. Um, so, so the the issue is okay. So you can have, I mean, we're like Sinn Fein, all the Sinn Fein MEPs and the Sinn Fein Party in Ireland. You know, we're we're always um, campaigning very strongly for the power to set tax rates to remain in the hands of the of the member state within the EU. So, and and that will continue to be our position. Absolutely, no questions asked. Um, but but we need. Like tax isn't the only economic power that we need. We need power to. We need the power to. Um, uh, tax and spend like we want. We, you know, we need to get rid of the fiscal compact. We need the power to respond to crises. We mm. need the power to develop an industrial strategy that might go against the EU state aid rules. Mm. So we need a lot of economic powers, including tax. But the um, the push for, uh, I mean, I think at the moment Brian Hayes will mainly be and and Fine Gael will mainly be fear mongering around the CCCTB. That's the Common Consolidated mm. Corporate Tax um, Base. Uh, for that's all those also tax geeks out there who know exactly what that means. Well, yeah. it, it's, uh, again, CCT it's how do you say that again? CCCTB. TB. It's it's been not to be confused with the CCTB. <laughs> all right, okay. okay. <laughs> it's been on the agenda since 2011, and Sinn Fein is opposed to it, but for different reasons than mm. Fine Gael is opposed to it. So we're opposed to it because um, it will reduce the ability of member state governments to be able to. Um, for example, provide a particular, like say, for example, a progressive government is in power and you wanted to, um, you wanted to introduce an incentive for investment into mm. green energy or something like that. The CCCTB may. Or if you wanted to declare Monaghan a special designated <laughs> area for investment. 
There's different things we could do. Um, but the, I mean, the, the, the key point is that the CCCTB, we're, we are opposed to it um, because of it does infringe in a, to a certain level on tax sovereignty. Um, but it also means some companies would be paying less tax because we'd have yes. to one rate. Mm. There, there are a number of things wrong with it, and we've looked at the detail of the proposal, and we don't think that it's actually going to be effective in reducing tax avoidance like mm. they claim to be. But the one thing it's not going to do, it's not going to um, force the Irish government to, uh, you know, to raise or lower the the tax rate. I mean, mm. that's just a complete distortion. Okay, like mm. always, we we run out of time really quickly. Thank you. Uh, um, um, just a couple of um, comments. Got a plug here by Hilary Tong, who's asking us to give a plug for the commemoration for the Manchester Martyrs in Colrush, Sunday the 26th. That's a Sunday coming. Um, no, 26th. 26th. What day is today? Today is the 15th. I got the Ardesh and then... Okay. Yeah. Well, God, then you you're, you're, plenty you're of time to, time to put... Are you going to that, <laughs> Colrush? On the 26th. Yeah, God save Ireland. It's so. unlikely because I'm somewhere else. Okay. Unfortunately. No bother. No bother. There's someone saying they have one of your umbrellas. They're fantastic. They're better yeah. than the mugs. I the only problem that. is that whenever keep you dry. Whenever, <laughs> whenever it rains, you know, when it's wet and miserable, people are going to think of you. No, At they're not. At least for me, they're going, they're when you're enjoying dry, a satisfying cup of... They're going to be dry. They will have clothes or flu. You can yeah. um, think German of the mugs. struggle yeah. for <laughs> United Ireland and the efforts that Matt Carty mm. is making. And on that note, um, the Ardesh this weekend, attend it if you can at all. It's going to be massive. I'm really looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to it, I am. I'm um, sure I am. We're going to be on Facebook Live. Is it? Sinn Féin, yep, website. Okay, um, so if you're not actually going to the um, Ardesh, you can attend, but if you can make it to Dublin, um, do it. Um, of, of course, the Ard Corla votes are coming up, so Martina Anderson and Lynn Boylan are looking for your support on the women's panel. One and two in order of preference, as they say. Um, Misha is looking for votes on the men's panel, and the three of us, if we're all elected, will be taking our instructions from the real leader, the, um, what the guards used to call the nighttime leader. Um, <laughs> It's a true story. One oh time when, when we oh were in Ogrish and Fane, um, there was a, a young lad who was arrested and the guys showed him pictures of me and says, is that your daytime leader? And Pierce Doherty, and this is, but that's your nighttime leader. He's your real, he's your real leader. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people know that. I'm sure Pierce I'm will sure be delighted make that that I'm sharing um, we'll that, that, that story. We have a couple of more Facebook Lives coming up, assuming that people are watching and sharing for their chance to win a Towards the United Ireland mug. So in two weeks time, the 29th, um, it's a Wednesday night, eight o'clock, um, Brussels time, seven o'clock. Brussels, Brussels. No, two weeks, Brussels. Do, and and then, do you want to tell people about our problems going home tomorrow? with the air strikes and everything. Nobody no. feels a bit sorry for any the of us. There's, yeah, there's a yeah. strike on in Paris. <laughs> so we, we so may we're actually be the, here for the, the, the workers. You know. so, but no, we'll make it, we'll make it. Um, Martina Anderson has yet to appear on Not The RT News. She's on the list. We're going to bring her in. It's going to be a really um, special episode. I'm going to try and have a real life British Brexit here in the studio alongside <laughs> Martina God. Anderson, so it's going to be the equivalent um, to UFC. It's uh, uh, that we can we can we can um, we can get. So um, listen, I think we're coming close to the end. If I can just check this out, uh, I don't see any major um, messages coming through, except to say um, continued solidarity to our friends in Catalonia. In case you are wondering, um, this wasn't the RT news. Good luck. Sock.